something like that and I appreciate uh, every aspect of it from the singing to the preaching the Lord met with us and uh, I appreciate that and uh, I tell you what um, Brother Jordan would you come open us up in prayer this afternoon you come open us up in prayer and then after he gets done praying Brother Butch you come on and lead us in the song hey brother let me make an announcement right before we praise then we can pray over that too the offer that came in for the men was it must be twelve hundred some dollars. I think they got four hundred forty dollars a piece. So I say to God be the glory. Amen. You thank the Lord for the Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you for another opportunity to be in your house this evening. Lord God, we thank you, Lord, for what we've yes, already Lord. felt, Lord, in our hearts, Lord. God, the work that you've already done for us, Lord God, we just want to thank you and praise you, Lord, for everything that you've done. Most importantly, Lord, we want to thank you for Jesus, Lord, and his sacrifice on the cross. Lord God, we just thank you for each and everything you've done, Lord God, for the offering, God. We may, may you get all the glory and honor out of it. God, I pray and ask that you, that you bless these men, Lord God, help them, Lord, in their endeavors for you and God that you go with them God as we go into this service now God I ask that you bless each and every song that be sung Lord God I pray that you would bless the message Lord and the messengers God as they come forward and Lord may you get all the glory honor and praise for it for it's in Jesus name we pray Amen Amen, Amen. Amen. Lord God this is her Speeches to 212 stand up for with good good breath of air and probably <laughs> Amen. 212. Keep on the firing line. Amen. Amen. First any time we need to keep on Amen. the firing line is today. Right. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir.
may be seated. Amen. Appreciate the Lord being so good to us. We'll get to you. Casey, while you're up here, you go ahead and jump over and sing us one. Amen. Somebody requested you to sing us, and I can't remember that song that I videoed you singing. You know that one I like. I can't remember the name of it, but that's all right. We're going to get Casey singing. But I will, I don't know it either. But anyway, we are going to get the uh, 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 barbecues went to my brain. Prairie Sisters back up here in a little bit too, all right? So it's going to be jammed up because you're going to go to sleep. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to change it up. We're going to change it up quick. We've got the, well, I won't tell you who's going to be first, but we're going we're gonna to roll with it, okay? So please be mindful. Don't get mad at us. We'll give you a shorter time, another one a longer time. <coughs> I'm trying to work all I can because people's got places to go and a lot of them's got to travel a long way home tonight. But ain't it been good, amen? I mean, wasn't that barbecue good, amen? I said, wasn't that barbecue good, amen? Somebody done killed a fatted hog, amen? Well, glory. Mmm. I need a cup of coffee. Jack me up.
try to get all I can in this two hours, amen, or three or four. We might be here to six. Oh, <laughs> y'all laughing. Nobody said amen. Both Frank got fireworks. Forever and brother, 
out of Israel from among for his, them for his mercy endured forever. Yeah. With a strong hand and stretched out arm for his mercy endured forever. Yeah. Yeah. Him which by the Red Sea and two parts of his mercy endured forever. Yeah. And made Israel to pass through the midst of the of it for his mercy endureth forever. Yeah. Who is God? Who is this God? Come on, preacher. Well, it says, both through Pharaoh and his host in the Red Sea, yeah. for his mercy endureth forever. Yeah. Then was led the people through the wilderness, for his mercy endureth forever. To him which spoke great kings, for his mercy endureth forever. Yeah. And so famous kings, for his mercy endureth forever. Who is this God? Who is this God? Sion, the king of the Amorites, of his mercy endureth forever. And all of the king of the basin, for his mercy endureth forever. Who remembered us here? I'm going to say, I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad God remembered me. Yes, yes. yes sir. I'm glad I got saved. Yes. Back in February 1992, yes. Sugar Town Baptist Church, yes. God remembered me. I was an old lost boy from East Spit, North Carolina. Yes. God remembered me. Yes. God said, He's one of mine. He's going to be one of mine. Yes. He's going to be one of mine. Yes. Just watch to see. Holy Spirit down my heart. Up high with the good hit Jack and Jim went up the hill. But I still be saved, no matter what that is said. I still be saved. The rest of it was a formality. It was a formality. God looked at the heart. Right. He looked at the heart. And he says, Who give food to all flesh? I saw. I saw, you know, all of the biblical word yeah. says all, A L L. Amen. All. That's everything. Yeah. That's all flesh. Yeah. He gives he gives it to all flesh. Yeah. For his mercy is just forever. Yeah. For give thanks to the God of heaven. For his mercy is just forever. Yeah. God is gracious. God is merciful. And yeah. God is gracious. Yes. 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 Likewise, ye, First Peter five five through seven says, "Ye, likewise, ye younger, submit yourself unto the elder. Mm -hmm. Ye all of you subject one to another, because of humanity, humanity, and God resists the proud, and gives grace to the humble. Right. Right. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, and be exalted to the due time." Tessie, oh! all! Yeah. There's that word, all! Oh, yeah. yeah. All oh, your yeah. care yeah. upon him, yeah. what he cared for you. Yeah. Yeah. But God, who is this God? Who is this God you're talking about? But God, but God who? But God who? Well, he's using, he's using words like sober and watch as a prior to life in these last days. You know, we're living in the last day for the coming for the coming of calling of his church. We're in the last day for the calling of his church. You know that? He says, but God, but God giveth grace of all grace. Wherefore he saith, God is the proud and giveth grace unto the humble. You know, I was preaching. In a prison down in Tennessee. And we, we all say, Who is this God? We well, gotta have faith. You gotta have faith and believe what God has done. Amen. You know, Jesus is God. I want you to know right now. Right. Sure. Jesus is God. Right. If you ain't got faith in Jesus, you can't be saved. Yeah. You know, God gives you that faith. God gives you that faith. That's was preaching. I was preaching a message while I was a uh, not preaching, I was in Tennessee, say prison. Talk to them about solitary confinement. For those that don't know what solitary confinement is, it's just a little hole in the door. Yeah. And a tin, a tin cell with no lights. 
He said, uh, I got down where I could get, get on his level. I got down where I could talk to him through that hole. I, I, I was talking to him, and I just, I just happened to say, I said, if you was to die today, you was to go to heaven, or would you go to hell? Mm -hmm. He said, without hesitation, I'd go to hell. Mm -hmm. I said, why would anybody say they go to hell when they don't have to? They don't have to. What God has done, I mean, going to a cross to Calvary, shedding his precious blood, and the third day rising, and if we believe, we don't have to go to hell. That's how simple it is. I said, why would anybody say, Say that. I go to hell. He said, Well, preacher, he said, if y'all have the faith, believe that Jesus is God. And I said, Who's the first president of the United States? <laughs> <laughs> he said, Preacher, it was George Washington. I said, How do you know? <laughs> he said, Well, I read it in a book. I said, I got a book right here. <laughs> yeah. catch on to this. Uh, we can do it in other places, other states, and all that. Tell everybody. I hope you're pulling your little phone up and doing video clips. Brother Matthew News in from Georgia. He don't have nowhere to preach tomorrow. He's from Rock of Ages Missionary. He ain't got nowhere to preach tomorrow. Are you soliciting? Well, sure I am. <laughs> <laughs> That's for some of you pastors, ain't you know, be Y'all sing tomorrow. Amen. 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 Been good, as the preacher said, the barbecue is good. Boy, the word of God, the food of the word of God, is so good. Oh, so it's kind of we got dessert for it, got the food. <laughs> so so good. Every one of us, as brother said, I don't, I don't know a favorite. Every one of us, how can you pick a favorite out of the word of God? And all these men, just uh, I it's, it's so refreshing, so. Refreshing. Just kind of just stand out in a good fresh shower on the summer days. And, yeah. Oh, it's just been wonderful. It's been wonderful. Thank each and every one of you. Praise the Lord. Thank Him. Amen. 
Amen. what he has done. Amen. Amen. He only knows what all he has done. You're right. Yeah, that's God, right. That's his holy name. I've got a story to tell. It's how Jesus saved my soul. Hey, my. I've got a story to tell. A story that'll never grow old. It started one day at an altar. My Redeemer, he pardoned me. I've got a story to tell. It's how Jesus set me free. Just like Paul on the road to Damascus, his light shined on me. Just like Barnabas sitting by the wayside, I was blind as could be. I cried to find that Lord had mercy and mercy he had on me. I've got a story to tell that will last for eternity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like most at the Red Sea, my Lord has made a way. And like old Daniel in the lion's den, the devil can't take it away. I'm safe, secure. I'm saved by the blood. I've got a story to tell. Oh, I've got a story to tell. It's how Jesus saved my soul. I've got a story to tell. A story that will never grow old. It started one day at an altar. My Redeemer, he pardoned me.
should. I sure am glad that's him today. I sure am glad that one of these days, hey, you'd be just following me if it took place right now. I'm looking for that day that the eastern sky is going to split and us and the dead of Christ arise first and us that are alive and remain be called up to meet him in the air. It's going to be a real good day, isn't it? I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm starting to wake up. Hey, it's good to be in the Lord's house. And uh, our next preacher is going to come. It's good to have Brother Jeff Bellamy with us. And uh, he's going to come. Take about 20 minutes to preach to our hearts. I'll say this as he's coming. I believe the singer said they do have a couple of CDs with them. So if you're interested in those, you can see them after the service. I'm sure they can hook you up with that. And uh, I'm telling you, y'all worship with the preacher as he comes. Preacher, you come on. Preach to our hearts today. Well, hello, everybody. I hope everybody had a good time already in the Lord. I could just sit back and just say, praise God. I like that. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. But that singing is tremendous, so I'm going to get some of that music for sure. Listen, you probably already have heard that we are with Rock of Ages Ministries. I get to go into the public schools of America and around the world. Amen. And what we're here and want to do is to be able to be a blessing to you as well. A lot of times people will tell you, well, you can't go into the public schools. <laughs> really? Go with us. Come on. Yeah. I'm telling you, we need Amen. help like crazy. Right. There's only six of us missionaries right now going into the public schools. And we go to the churches and we teach and we train the churches. It only takes one, maybe two people out of each church that would have a burden to go reach their local public schools. Can I show you what's in the public schools? Hundreds upon hundreds of souls. Yes, right. 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 Sure. Most of them don't know anything yes. about God. Oh, right. 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 I can get a lot of people to agree with me, but I'm having a hard time getting people to go with me. Yeah. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Listen, I don't want to rebuke, but I'm telling you, we need help. So why do we go to the churches? Here's why. God blesses the effort of the local church. Right. And what we do as missionaries with the Rock of Ages, we'll come in and we'll work with the church. About four months is usually what it takes to be able to set up the schedules to go into a school and to train the people of the church. It only takes one day, listen to me, one day, maybe two days at the most per month. To go to a school near you, can you give a half a day? Can you give a lunch hour? Come on, to go to a school. What are you doing there? We have two things we do. We teach character, morals, and ethics from this. Right. Character, morals, ethics. We have lessons that teach themselves. We need a teacher. We need a classroom helper. And it goes tremendous when you send them out two by two, like the Bible says. And we're in the classrooms. And we're teaching. And we're uh, teaching character, morals, and ethics. But we also develop Bible clubs. We have a teaching side. And we have a preaching side. Amen. I like that one-two punch. You know what I'm talking about? Listen, I don't like it. One-two. I like boxing. I really do. And, and, and I'm talking about in the classroom. Rooms, you're teaching. Now, you hear me. I get excited. I'm a missionary evangelist. I like to preach. So when I teach, it comes out preaching. So I combine it. It's preaching. Amen. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> then I have also, we developed the preaching side of it. Listen, I, these kids need both. How would you like to preach? How would you like to preach to an audience of students 580 at a time? How would you like to preach to 430 at a time? 200 at a time? 60 at a time? 120 at a time? Over and over and over. We get to do this. And we get to teach them the Word of God. Scripture's on the board. How do you do that? Because the Supreme Court ruled we're supposed to be teaching this the government knows it, but the churches don't. We teach them, we teach you how to do this. Not getting sued is a good thing. Amen. Amen. We have a training course to be able to teach the churches. You want to know more? See me at the back door. Amen. Oh, wait a minute. Don't you know those commercials? But wait, there's more. <laughs> I like those. Because you're here right now, when you go out that back door, I'm going to give you one of these. I want to bless your soul. How many here, can I see a testimony? How many here has ever 
Have you ever wondered where to find something in the Bible, but you never knew where to find it? Amen. <laughs> you know, the kids are the same way. We give them a Bible. We give them a New Testament, but they really don't know how to use this. We came up with a book. We put this one together. God's wisdom, our topics. And what this does in the front of this has about three or four pages of current, everyday, common things that we face. It's in alphabetical order. And so you come over here and you want to know about uh, what the Bible has to say about alcohol? Well, right here on two pages, you've got at least nine verses ready to go about what the Bible says about alcohol. Amen. Then we have more down here that they have to use your Bible for. Amen. Amen. Now watch this. It's in alphabetical order. You want to know about attitudes? How many's got a bad attitude today? Raise your hand. You need this. I'm telling you right now. You're not raising your hand. I know you do. So watch. I want you to see this. You've got at least nine verses and then more of what the Bible says. You come on over here. You want to know about drug abuse? What's the Bible say about that? You want to know about God? You want to know about uh, joy? You want to know going about salvation? You need this. They tell us that we're not supposed to bring the Bible out. Let me put, take it this way. They tell us, I hate when I drop that. The sound man does too. He's going to... So here's what happens. Are you listening? I've been told, don't you bring that Bible into my school. You get me in trouble. Don't you bring that Bible in there. I want you to teach the godly lessons like you do. Amen. I want you to do that. Don't you bring that Bible in here so you know what we do? We put the scripture together in everyday topics and we, have, we put hundreds of thousands of these in the kids' hands along with these. Amen. So, I want you to have a, a gift as you go out. Also, for the younger kids, I've got coloring books. I've got this particular one, King James Scripture at the bottom of them. Amen. In the back of it. Listen, you need this for church visitation. Because you know what? Sometimes you go knocking on the door and they growl at you and stuff. And, and you know what happens next? You try to give them a track and they'll just growl at you. But I've never been turned down for a coloring book. It's got King James Scriptures all the way through it. And in the back of it, it's got my favorite track I always use to, with the soul win. Amen. As we call that's the parents page right there. Amen. Can I show you? It's just a really big track you all need this and as you go out the door you'll be able to get these too okay all right if you got your bibles with me turn to esther esther please i was going to preach i had two messages if i got to preach today and here again that's what it says you got to be ready i had two messages and i was like dear god which one do you want me to preach dear god and i couldn't get no answer dear god if i get to preach which one is it okay dear god i'm not going to get to preach i get it i'm okay but dear god if i do get to preach what am i going to preach? i mean i'm sitting there going <laughs> don't laugh at me y'all i'm doing the same thing you're going like, yeah i know i know what you mean preacher. i know what you mean <laughs> And the brother preached that one message exactly part for part that I was going to preach. I kid you not. I'm like, okay, I guess plan B. Amen. We got the other one, not plan B to God, but here it goes. And Esther, I'm going to teach you with the God's grace, with God's help. I'm going to give you, I'm going to teach you what God has taught me years ago. There's a little word in the Bible that you and I need. It transformed my prayer life. It transformed the ministry. Are you listening to me? You've heard that I go into the public schools. You've heard that I stand before principals and superintendents and teachers. You've heard that I get to go. And sometimes even God gives me audience with lawyers and everybody else. And you're going like, whoa, you must be educated, man. I failed English. <laughs> I hated school. And where does God have me sermon? <laughs> I'm not smart enough. You're not smart enough. I'm not talented enough. You're not talented enough. Amen. I don't have the personality to stand before these kids. I don't have the personality or the talent or the wisdom or education or anything else to be able to stand before all these educated people and be effective for God. How do you do it? We need it. 
Father, I ask you, please help me these next few minutes to give the church, to give this meeting, Lord, what you've taught me. Father, help us in Jesus' name. Amen. In Esther chapter number 2, Esther chapter number 2 and verse number 1, it says, After these things, when the wrath of King Asherah was appeased, and he remembered what Vashti and what, the, what she had done and what was decreed against her. Now look what it says after these things. What happened in chapter 1 was he, the king was getting ready to go out and conquer more land. In the spring and in the, in the summer, the kings would go out and try to expand their kingdoms by means of war and taking everything they could. They'd bring in the princes from other countries, bring in kings from other countries to line up with them and their armies to be able to go out and conquer, bring in mercenaries and these type things. And in chapter 1, that's exactly what was going on. But it happened for a whole month. A big party going on, one after another and another. And all of a sudden, they got a drunkenness to them. They wanted the beauty of Queen Vashti. He said, go get the queen. Have her come out and dance before us and go before us. And Queen Vashti said, it ain't happening. Praise God for a woman who's got some backbone. Said, you bunch of drunken sots, you ain't going, I ain't going there. It cost her some things to do right. But listen, let me show you what happened. So the king then goes to battle and embarrassed him because the, king, the queen wouldn't do what he was wanting her to, embarrassed the other men that was with him. But it has been about a period of, of right at two years since that happened. A little over a year and a half. Now what happened was, you can look it up in history, the Battle of Salamis. Battle of Salamis. And what happened? The Persians were on the attack and they were all in these ships. And God brought up this great big storm. And he drove, he drove the ships from into the, a certain area where the Greeks were waiting on them. And the Greeks had made a battleship of their own, a little ship that would maneuver real good, and where God had blown the, the armada of the Persians into. Well, what happened was. The Greeks just rammed them in the sides of the ship, and those men never got off the ship. They drowned, and now it's back to Persia, and here it is after these things. He's trying to rebuild now. He now remembers what happened. Now watch what happens. So he remembers about all this. He says, well, give me 300 virgins. I want you to go all through the country. I want you to bring 300 virgins to me. And he said, I'll pick me out a queen from them. So he got 300 virgins, and, and, he, and he brings them in for purification. Six months of one thing, six months of education, and all this thing. And now we come to the story. Here it is in chapter number 2 of Esther and verse number 15. It says, Now when the turn of Esther, the daughter of uh, Abiel, uncle of Mordecai, who had taken her for his daughter, was come to go to the king, she required nothing. What? Haggai, the king's chamberlain, the keeper of the women, appointed. Now look what it says. Look at it close. Here's the secret. And Esther obtained favor. In the sight of all them that looked upon her. How in the world? Boy, you say she must have been a beauty. Boy, she must have been something to look at. Can I show you something? Beauty only goes so far. Amen. Amen. It's what's under the surface that makes the difference. Oh, yeah. And you can listen. You can fool some of the people some of the time. You listen to me. But listen, it says right here, she obtained favor. How do you obtain favor? Look what it says. She obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her. Are you kidding me? There's 300 of them. Now he, she's still a slave girl. She's been brought in. She's a slave girl. She's beneath this society. But she made it into the cut of the 300 of the virgins. Can I show you something? She can't even speak the language well. She doesn't even know all the customs yet. And she's in the running for a queen? Amen. How does that happen? Look what it says. In verse number 17, And the king loved Esther above all the women, and she obtained, there it is again, she obtained grace and 
F-A-V-O-U-R. In the King James Bible, that's how it's spelled. F-A-V-O-U-R. In our regular English language, it's not spelled that way. If you've got one of those strange Bibles, you're not going to get the meaning out of this. And what I'm telling you right now, the King James Bible has it spelled exactly how it should be. It has a much deeper meaning in the Word of God about this word favor. So I want you to see this. It says... And she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins. So that he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. How does this happen? She can't even speak everything. She doesn't know the custom. She's a slave girl. How do you obtain favor? How do you obtain favor? Turn with me, please. Hold your fingers or put your bookmark in Esther. We're going to come back there in just a minute. But I want you to go to another place. Genesis chapter number 39. Genesis chapter number 39. Come on, quick, hurry. You're, you're killing my time. Now come on, turn your back. Genesis chapter number 39. There's another feller I want to introduce to you about this word. I want you to see this. In Genesis chapter number 39, and verse number 22, it says this. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison. And whatsoever they did there, he was the doer of it. The keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand. Because the Lord was with him, and that which he did... The Lord made it prosper. I get it. Okay, so here's what happens. God does these things. God's going to do this. God's going before you. I get that. But there's this word that you and I need to know about favor. Yes. So here's what happens. Joseph was, was, was lied on. He went to Potiphar's house. And when in Potiphar's house, Potiphar himself said, I don't know about you. I don't know anything about you. But I'm going to turn everything over to you. You're a slave. You're, a, you're one of them that come in. And I, I don't even know where you come from. But I like you. Yeah. And I'm going to turn the whole household over to you. I can't help it if I've got a lying wife. She lied on you. Okay, you're going to prison. So he goes to prison. He's now in charge. He Listen, he's under the rule of this jailer. Can I show you about this jailer? This jailer has seen everything there is to see negative about society. He has seen the liars. He's seen the rapist. He's seen it all. He's seen the druggies. He's seen, listen, he's seen the God haters. He's seen it all. He's seen everything in that prison. And he looks at Joseph and he says, <laughs> I don't know why, but I like you. Can I show you something? I'm in these classrooms and the kids are absolutely bouncing off the walls. They, the teachers are out of, they're out of control for the teachers. And I've seen our guys, I've seen it myself. We walk into the classroom and when we walk into the classroom, <sighs> yes, sir. 20-year veterans, 25-year veteran teachers, 30-year veteran teachers come up to us. They'll go, they'll go and get other teachers and come in, and they're pointing, and they're looking, and they're going like, yeah, come yeah. on, Richard. And they come up to me, and they say, how do you do that? How do you do what? How do you do that? How do you do what? How do you do that with the kids? They're bouncing off the walls. How do you do that? Oh. And they're going like, yeah, 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 I get that. But how do you do that? Yeah. I'm not smart enough. I'm not telling enough. I can't jump through hoops. And I'm not going to. It's God that has to do these things. Yes. Now watch. Look what it says. Are you with me? In verse 22, the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison. And whatsoever they did, he was the doer of it. And the keeper of the prison. Do you realize if something went wrong, it was the, it was the jailer's head? Uh, yeah. And he turns everything over to a slave? 
Hey, can I show you something else? Joseph had the keys and he didn't leave. That's important. He had the keys and he didn't leave. Hang on that thought. Now watch. How do you do this? Let me show you verse 21. But the Lord was with Joseph. Look at it. Look at it. And he showed him mercy. Look at it. And gave him favor Amen. in the sight of the keeper of the prison. I started doing this word study. I started looking at this thing. And I knew it wasn't me. I needed the God. I needed God to do something through me. I need to be effective. I've only got a short time in front of my audiences in these classrooms usually. And I needed God to do something. And I needed God to do it quick. And I needed God to do it. And I, I can't. And God started showing me this thing. About 70 words in the, in, the, in the Bible have the word favor, F-A-V-O-U-R. Only about 12 of those words relate to our use in prayer and what God does. God is the only one that gives favor. Mm -hmm. Turn with me quickly. Turn with me over into Exodus, just a few chapters over. Exodus chapter number three. I want you to see this. You remember this. You remember Moses and Aaron? <laughs> you remember the, the plagues? You remember all those things, the frogs and all like that? You know, the body loss. Uh, I mean, you remember all that. Look, I want you to see this. In Exodus chapter 3 and verse 21, it says this. God said this, and I will give this people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass that when they go, you shall not go empty. But every man, I mean, every woman shall borrow of her neighbor and her that sojourneth in her house, her jewels of silver, jewels of gold, and raiments. And I hate that bell. And I want you to see this. As this thing goes on, let me explain something to you. Two minutes, got it. So watch. In, in Exodus, it was this. He said it. He did it. He told Aaron. He told, he told Moses. And he said, I'm going to do this. I will do this. Turn over just a few chapters to chapter number 11 of Exodus. Quick. Exodus chapter number 11. Verse number 3. And the Lord gave the people favor. Who did it? The Lord gave it. Gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Moreover, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt in the sight of Pharaoh's servants and in the sight of the people. He just gave them frogs. <laughs> and they died and stank up the country. And the people liked him. How do you do that? Happy is the day when I learned to ask God mm. to give me favor Amen. before all I speak. Mm -hmm. yeah, God. Mm -hmm. yeah. When's the last time you went door to door visitation? I learned to ask God to give me favor with the people before they come to the door. When's the last time you had a bad deacons meeting? Ask God to give you favor with that deacons. Yeah, when's the last time you had a, a bad meeting with some families? Ask God to give you favor in their sight before you meet with them. How many times do we just put our heads down and plow through? Amen. Amen. And we wonder why we have problems. We just push through, push our way through. One last, go back to Esther, quick. I'm on borrow time now, quick. Go back to Esther. In Esther, chapter five, verse number two. Look where Esther was at. Chapter 5, verse number 2. And it was so when the king saw Esther, the queen, standing in the court, that she obtained favor in his sight. Amen. Do you know what that means? She didn't know the outcome. 
but she was right where she was supposed to be. Amen. Don't you quit. Mm -hmm. Don't you give up. Amen. Don't you back up. Learn to ask God for favor. And, and it was so when the queen Esther, he saw Queen Esther standing in the court and she obtained favor in sight. And the king held out to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand. So Esther drew near and touched the top of the scepter. Then said the king to her, what wilt thou, Esther? And what is thy request? How many times do we go to God with a laundry list? And I'm not saying we shouldn't have prayer. But can I show you this? Dear God, I just want to be quiet. I just want to sit near you. Father, give me faith. That's the truth, amen. Yeah, if I've right. ever heard it, that'll help you. Yes, so that's better than an afternoon with Captain Kangaroo, ain't it? <laughs> I'm telling you. He makes me want to go to school, amen. I love Brother Bell now. I don't know exactly when me and him hooked up. Exactly. It was a meeting somewhere. It's been several years now. We just like buddies. I like him. He, I guess he likes me, but I like his enthusiasm. Amen. He makes me want to go back to school and take character, amen. We got some new preachers with us. I'm trying to get there, buddy. So next couple preachers, about ten minutes, gonna fire away. Uh, Brother Caleb Kitzmiller, I think that right, amen. Just met him this weekend. He came to the meeting, and we're gonna let him fire away. And that's what we need. We need favor. You know what to get you in prison? You know what keep you in prison? Favor. You know what keep you pastoring for a long time? People speak highly of you. Favor. Not because you're getting along and you're appeasing everybody. When a man of God, uh, listen, when he's doing what he's supposed to do, he'll obtain favor with the people. Amen. Amen. All right, man. Fire away, preacher. Amen. What a blessing it is to be able to stand. Uh, I was telling Jacob, it's always uh, makes you more nervous when you got to preach to preachers. Uh, I feel like a mule in a Kentucky Derby many times. Thank you, brother. Uh, Job chapter number 19. We'll get right into the message. I was telling sis that saying, uh, Sister Perry back there, uh, something that blesses my heart more than about anything is hearing people testify, uh, tell how they came to Jesus Christ and how they uh, uh, got saved. That's one of my favorite things. It seems you don't hear that a lot in the churches these days. Uh, you ask people if they got a testimony, and usually they stand up and uh, tell about how Charlene stubbed her toe and how they need you to pray for this or that. But thank God we can still have a testimony even in the day that we live in. Thank God for it. Job chapter number 19, uh, beginning reading verse 25. Very simple message. Uh, it's a familiar scripture. Uh, one of the most quoted, I believe. Job 19, 25 through 27. The Bible says, I like this, for I know it doesn't say I think or I assume. He said I know. Yeah. Think about that. Amen. I know that my Redeemer liveth. And that he shall stand at the latter day. I like it. Upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body. Yet in my flesh shall I. Hey think about it. See God. Whom I shall see for myself. And mine eyes shall behold. And not another. Though my reins be consumed. Within me, I'm going to read 25 again just because I like it so much. Think about it. For I know, I know that my Redeemer yeah. liveth yeah. and that he shall stand at the latter day yeah. upon yeah. the earth. Hey, think about that. Amen. Thank God. You know, if we summed up that little uh, uh, verse of Scripture, this little passage of Scripture that we read here, we I believe that Job would be saying that he has a hope. He has a hope. Yeah. You know why I believe that is because Job had lost almost everything. He lost his livestock. He, that was his way to worship. Then he lost his kids. You think about it. He lost all his kids. Then it says he lost his wealth and then he lost his health. But thank God, even though Job had lost everything, he could still look up to the heavens and he could say, my Redeemer lives. Thank God when we get our back up against the wall, we can look up and I can say, he's alive, he's alive. He's alive, he's alive. Thank God I know he is alive. Thank God there was a day when somebody cared enough about me to introduce me to the one who didn't stay dead. Thank God they may have hung him on a cross. Thank God they may have beat him about half to death. Thank God they may have shamed him and all those things. But thank God he rose three days later. Thank God he had power over death. Thank God 
for it. You know, many times in this life we forget that. We forget about just where God brought us from. Uh, and when the, the, the time that we met Jesus Christ and realized that he was alive. He was alive. You know, a couple of years ago I lost my mom on Halloween. And I remember that phone call that changed my life forever. I was on my way to Caitlin's house. We were just dating at the time. And my sister called me and said, Mom's fell in the front yard and we can't get her to respond. What should we do? I mean, she had passed out. She was in bad health before. But uh, I just said, we need to pray, Kenner. We need to pray. And I said, I'm going to pray. i got to go. And I just hung up on my sister there. And I remember as uh, I, I was... Uh, driving on my way to my sister's house. I remember saying, God, I can't lose my mom. Please don't take my mom from me. God, you know I just can't bear it. I can't bear this pain of losing my mom. And you know, after I prayed for about five minutes, I called my, uh, my sister back. And I said, Kendra, what's the update? And I was expecting to hear some good news. Maybe mom's came back too. She's doing okay. But I didn't hear that. Instead, I heard we called 911, we called the ambulance, and they're on their way uh, to, to see if they can uh, revive mom. And I, I said, oh, I got to go. I got to pray some more. Uh, as soon as I hung up, I said that same prayer. God, please don't take my mom from me. I can't lose my mom. Well, I called Kenner back after I got done praying one last time. I said, Kenner, has anything happened? This has been about 10 minutes later. She said, no, mom's still laying there. She's still not uh, responding. I said, I gotta go when I hung up. But it seemed at that moment I began to think, God knows best. God knows what He's doing. And I said, Lord, whatever your will be done, Lord, just please have your will on my mom's life. Lord, I pray that you would send down some grace, Lord. See, I'd experienced God's saving grace, but I'd never experienced His comforting grace until that very moment. Yeah, sure. And it was at that moment when I said, Lord, will you let your will be done? It's like the Lord himself came down and sat in that car with me. And the very first thing that popped in my mind was, As the world looks upon me, as I struggle along, they say I have nothing. They are so wrong in my heart. I rejoice from me. You know why I believe that? Because I believe we may have taken mom's body and put it in a coffin and rolled it out to the cemetery. We may have put her six feet down in the ground. But I believe right now she's yes, more alive sir. than she's ever been. Thank God. It goes on a little more. 
And David said, I believe this, David in this family said, in my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple and my cry came before him. Even into True. his ears. You think about that. Yeah, you Lord. think about the God that created everything. The brother was talking about last night, I believe. The God that made the sun to rise. That, that created the galaxy, the millions of galaxies that's out there that the NASA says there is. They said there's billions and millions of them. Millions and trillions, maybe. You think about it. That God that created that vast expanse. Yeah. He had time for a young boy that needed him. Had time yeah. to come back. Yeah. Thank God that time to come yeah. back. Yeah. I was a nobody. I met the, but I met the king of kings. Yeah. Yeah. I believe if I met a king down here, I'd want to get dressed up real nice and everything. Yeah. Come on. When I met Jesus Christ, the one that's the king of kings, I was wearing my pajamas. Thank God. Yeah. You know the best thing about it? I wasn't looking for him. He can't look at me. Praise God. The God that created it all. Listen to me. I've been high on a lot of things in this world and I hate it. I wish I would have never done it. But there's nothing, nothing in this world like the high I got. When I realized all my sins were cast as far as this is from the West. You think about that if you don't know the Lord this morning. You don't have to be guilty anymore. You don't have to worry about a day dying and what the hate Thank God you don't have to worry about facing the fires and flames one day. You don't have to worry about the preacher was talking to being thirsty. No, you don't have to worry about all that. But it says that you will become joint heirs oh, yeah. with sure. Jesus Christ. Amen. He gives that to us for free. Yeah, with the water. He gives that to us for free. You think about it. The free gift that Amen. Jesus gave when he suffered and died for us. Amen. If you haven't been saved, I beg you. I beg you, would you please, please at least just think about it. Amen. Think about it. You know, there's. you may be scared and may, may fear and all those things. That's what I thought. I thought, what's everybody going to think about me? I've already sure. told them I've been saved. They're going to judge me in different things. Come but on, preacher. I'm telling you, 10 seconds after I accepted it, one second after I accepted the Lord, I didn't care about all those things Amen. anymore. Amen. I was just focused on Amen. being saved, yeah. saved, yeah. saved. Yeah. Thank Amen. God for it. Thank God. Amen. 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 Appreciate you. I'm trying to move fast and get Logan. I just met Logan, right? Is that Logan? Yes. Perry, right? Uh, Hickman. No. Hickman. He's not a he's a Perry, but he's a Hickman. No? Yeah. You know, it's Ken to him. <laughs> I got the first name anyway, Logan, amen. Get Logan come, give us 10 minutes. I'm trying to get everybody in as fast as I can. I'm not trying to cut anybody short. I'd like to preach to everybody, but it just won't happen, amen. But uh, pray God to just make this good. Amen. I mean, just ain't it just good amen. to come in and sit around this right here. Amen. Like what uh, Brother Benoit said about that social uh, media. Get off that and let's have a, a, a gospel media, amen. Yeah. Yeah. Appreciate that. Come on, Logan. I thought that was Logan there. You come yeah. on. I'm just talking while you get here, amen. No <laughs> dead time. I don't like dead time, downtime. You, amen. Just fire away, amen. Appreciate the Lord. Oh, Brother Manoy said one more H word for us this afternoon. Have at it. Amen. <laughs> amen. I started to sit down and I wasn't sure exactly what was going to happen if they were going to come up and sing or whatnot. I don't know. All, all I can say is that I, I have enjoyed being here, amen. amen. Listening to amen. so many different preachers at so many different points of view. It, it's been so good to be here. One thought that's stuck in my mind throughout this entire week and even during both of these days is that God is faithful. Amen. He's faithful. Amen. He's so faithful to me. Anytime I need him, he's right there. He's right there with me. I have so much college work and all that to do, been struggling, well, not struggling, really stressed about that, but God's been right there with me. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Even through jobs or anything, God is right there with you. It doesn't Amen. matter Amen. what the world you go through. Amen. God is right Amen. there Amen. with you. Ever since been saved, has been with me. Amen. Amen. And I know I'm going home all because of him. Amen. Yeah. Amen. If ever, Bible, please turn to 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Absolutely love this scripture. The Lord showed me this whenever I read this chapter. It's such such a blessing whenever you maybe you uh, read it. You may have already read it. I don't know. All I know is that word's been good to me, really good to me. First Corinthians ten thirteen. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful. Amen. 
Let me read that again. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. We all go through the exact same problems. Uh, I mean, sure, there's different situations and everything, but we all go through stress or, I don't know, I can't think of anything off the top of my head right now, but we all go through struggles in life. But God is faithful. Amen. He's right there, right there with you. Just, just ask him for help. He'll help you. His line is always open. Just call him. <laughs> Easy as that. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation. This is the amazing part. Even though we go through temptations, this is what God does. But will with the temptation also make a way to escape. They may be able to bear it. Yeah. You're not going to always be in that storm. I've been in many storms in my life. Many storms. But God's brought me through every single time. He's never failed me, never will. Amen. I can always rely on him, amen? That's right. Uh, and you know why? It's because he's faithful. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I do not deserve it. I deserve to be in hell right now. Yeah. Amen. But Jesus took hell on earth for me. I'm, I'm 20 years old. I'm, I may not be half the age of any, some of y'all in here, but I'm not going to point fingers or anything, but <laughs> but Lord's been good to me. I was saved when I was seven years old. You can get saved at any age. I believe it was my great grandfather got saved in his, I think it was his 70s, or, or something like that. It doesn't matter. It's when, it's when, it's at the age of accountability, amen. Right. It was Wednesday night, <laughs> at Wednesday night church. Amen. Some churches nowadays aren't having Wednesday nights. Yeah. If my church had to have Wednesday night that night, yeah. who knows? I may have not gotten saved. I don't know. I don't know. Sure. It pays to go to church. It pays to have Amen. church. Amen. Amen. Now more than ever, we need church, especially yeah. in this nation nowadays. Yeah. I mean, at college and everything, some of my textbooks, it seems like they're, it seems like they're almost enforcing all this, all this different gender junk. Yeah. Yeah. Junk. Garbage. God calls it. God calls it an abomination. In Galatians six fourteen, it says that God forbid that I should glory. See, it's not about me. Not about any of us. It's all about Him. He gave it all at Calvary. We should have been the ones on the cross, but Jesus gave it all. He He literally gave it all. He didn't just. He didn't just go up there and just instantly die. No. No, he was literally torn apart. For you, for me, for you, for you, for everyone in this room. So that way we can go to heaven. The creator died for the creation. But God forbid that I should, that I should glory. Save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. By whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. Jesus gave it all for everyone. Yeah. For everyone. That's right. One thing that's encouraged me being here is that I'm not the only one. I'm not the only one. There, there are multiple other preachers that have preached before me during this time. And that's encouraging to me. To know that God isn't, hasn't just called me. He's called Every single one of us Christians to do something. Yeah. Whatever it may be. Teacher, preacher, missionary, even just a, a deacon, a normal church going. I don't know. It's all in the Lord's time and all in the Lord's will. Amen. God has something for all of us. If I thank him, I can always rely on him. Because he is faithful. Amen. Amen. Yeah. He's, he's been so good to me. I do not deserve it. God's blessed some of my family to be here. I don't deserve that. I don't, I don't deserve my, my God fearing mom who has raised me right. I don't deserve my hard working dad. I don't, I don't deserve this suit. I don't, I don't deserve this Bible. I don't deserve anything. Yeah, he gave it all for me. Sometimes, sometimes I wonder why. Why, Lord? He loves me. He loves me. I don't deserve it. I truly don't deserve it for everything that I've done. I am the lowest, just like what Paul says, I am the lowest of sinners. Yet he died for me. I don't deserve anything. Sometimes I've wondered, Lord, 
You called me to be a preacher? Of all people, I'm I'm no Billy Mitchell. I'm I'm not this person or this person. I you called me? Yeah. Come on. God has a plan for me. Hey, I'm, hey, I'm excited to see what he's got in the store. Hey, 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 all I can say is thank you, Lord. Yeah. Thank you. And we can't say that enough. Right, right. You know what's the great part to bring the Christian? We're gonna have all eternity. Thank you, man. Isn't isn't that a blessing to hear? That we're gonna have all eternity to praise him, to be reunited with family, to meet the people in this book. This book is 100% real. It's 100% true. God is real. I read in my, in my textbook in college saying that, oh, uh, Christianity, is just, Christianity is just a mindset. It's just the way that people think. No. <laughs> no, amen. God is real. You know why I know he's real? He lives in me. Amen. He lives in me, amen. He speaks to me every single day. He hears me when I pray. He helps me constantly. And still, I don't. I still don't deserve it. I keep saying that, but I really don't deserve it. But God is faithful. He's gracious. He is loving. He is merciful. He is my Savior. Amen. He has saved me from hell. Amen. <laughs> saved me one time from hell, but He's constantly. Providing for me constantly, his blood is constantly. I can't think of the right words right now. Constantly covering my sins. There it is. You're right. yeah. We we sin every single day. All of us do. Oh, they might. Yeah. But Jesus' blood still covers it. Amen. 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 Whenever Jesus died on the cross, he didn't just die over this specific person or just for that thief on the cross. He died for all of us. Amen. Past, Amen. present, future. For all of us, amen. 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 He's been so, so good to me. And like I said, I, I was saved at seven. There may be ones here that aren't saved that maybe around that age, maybe older than that. God can save you. If he can save me, God can save you. God saved Paul. Many preachers and teachers and Christians call, talk about Paul being so high and everything. God was a person, not God, Paul was a persecutor of the church. And God saved him. I believe God could have saved Hitler. I say that, but he could have. God can save anyone. Now praise God so much that he has saved me. If you're not saved, God can save you tonight. Amen. God's faithful. Just keep believing and relying on him. Amen. 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 Appreciate that. Amen. You definitely ain't got them all now. Amen. Uh, yeah. Come on now. Don't, don't die on Amen. me now. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. It's good to have people preach. We're not all the same. Amen. Right. Praise God. There used to be things I preached. Uh, singers, come on. Uh, you pray voices. Uh, sing a couple. Um, there used to be things I preached back years ago. Now I go back and look at my old notes. I'm like, why would anybody listen to that? Half that's wrong. Amen. I guess he just grinned and buried him, man. So, but uh, anyway, y'all, y'all don't look at me like that. Huh? Remember the first time you sung a song? Oh, Amen. Hurry, oh, oh. Some y'all still. Nobody want none of that. Son, that was Presley, rock the rock and roll world. Why he put everything he had into it. And if he can do that, why can't we put what we got sure. into what God's done for us? And you could stand this for a moment while they sing. I know you've been sitting. You're going to go to sleep. Stand up for a second. They're going to sing. And you sit down when you stood up long enough. You sit down when you want to. Stand there. Sing for us. Lady, I've been around with the church. I heard on John's son here. She made a statement quite a little bit back. And she kind of liked me. When I first met her, she said that, I'm afraid to do anything. I'm afraid I'll do it in the flesh. I said, well, if you get up there long, you'll be in the flesh. <laughs> That's what we live in. <laughs> I have no choice but to get up in the flesh. <laughs> but I knew what she meant. She said, oh, you know what I mean? I said, yeah, I know. I said, but you got to remember, we are the flesh. And I said, we are. And I said, we're not supposed to live in you. But if we do anything for the Lord, you have to be doing the flesh, people. She's going to get this one. The more that I trust him, the more that I love him, nothing good for me will he deny. The longer I know him, the more I want to show him. 
preacher. He's going to talk about 15 minutes and uh, preach to our hearts. And I have to tell this, last year he really was a, a, a it crept up on me. Last year I didn't know him, but I'm glad that I got to meet him. And um, I, I'm telling you, I got up and me and Jeff was talking back and forth and trying to figure out who the next preacher was going to be. And he said, what about Brother Stephen there? And I said, well, I don't know. I ain't never met him, don't know nothing about him. And uh, I'm glad that we followed the Holy Ghost. Yeah. So he preached the house down last year. And uh, I'm sure he'll be a blessing to your heart, no pressure or anything. No <laughs> <laughs> pressure at all. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Behind all these other fine preachers. Then did an introduction like that. <laughs> like loading down the truck till I pulled up the hill and by the way, transmission slipped in. <laughs> First Chronicles. Second Chronicles. Sorry, Second Chronicles, chapter number one. And while you're turning there, can I give you a commercial? Yes. I was gonna do it anyway. Go ahead. They've been telling you about these Bibles. Can I give you the other perspective from it? I've been a fireman for 18 years. Our church has taken care of the Bibles for our area, but I can I tell you from the fireman's perspective, we appreciate that. Amen. Pastors, get a hold of that. Church members, right. pick them up. Yeah. Firemen, police officers, medics, Suicide rates through the roof right now. Yeah. They need help. Get a hold of it. It's an open mission field, in my opinion. Uh, God will bless you for it. I uh, don't, probably not. There you go, is that better? Uh, but do, do get to take advantage of that opportunity. They're an open door to you. Uh, I've yet to be turned down myself. Matter of fact, I went to the fire association in our area. The president of our association, he said, that's a project I cannot get behind. And he starts laughing. He said, when I was in the Navy, we put Bibles in every barrack. He said, we'd be glad to help come on in and bring our firemen a Bible. Mm -hmm. So please take advantage of that. First or Second Chronicles chapter number 1. Look at verse number 7, if you would, please. In that night... Did God appear unto Solomon and said unto him, Ask what I shall give thee. Solomon said unto God, Thou hast shown great mercy, thank the Lord, unto David my father, and hast 
made me to rule in his stead. Now, O Lord God, let thy promise unto David my father be established. For thou hast made me king over a people like the dust of the earth in multitude. Give me now wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before these people. For who can judge this thy people that is so great? Familiar passage of Scripture. I don't have to develop that for you a great deal. And I want to give you a lot of Scripture, a lot of different places in 15 minutes. And so I'm just going to have to bounce over it. I'm interested here. I want you to notice with me that God asked Solomon a question. As a parent of two children, I like questions. Uh, I like the same questions my father gave me. Do you pay the bills around here? Do you have a job? Uh, are you the one that is putting clothes on your back? Those type of questions. The same type of questions that God asked Job over there. Uh, was you there when I formed the foundations of the earth? Uh, have you been down to see the stream, streams in the bottom of the ocean? Uh, uh, had considerable hemoth. Uh, just consider what's done there. Do you know how that thing works? Uh, God's got a lot of questions. Yeah. 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 I like questions because questions demand answers. Here in this case, uh, God is asking Solomon a, a question and he's asking him, here, what is it that I can give you? Uh, I have a multitude of questions that I can look at this morning and we'll come, or this evening. We'll come back to this one in just a minute. But uh, Jesus asked a question in John chapter number 5 at the man at the pool. He said, wilt thou be made whole? Have you considered it once in your life what that statement, that question was, wilt thou be made whole? He's implying to the man there, you're not whole, but would you like to be? Yeah. I've been saved a long time. He said seven. I got saved at four. I beat you. Oh, thank God I beat you. Oh, I got in early before I got boneheaded too thick. Oh, but I'm not whole yet. I'm saved. I'm going to heaven, but I'm still a sinner. Yeah. 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 You're making mistakes. Yeah. Yeah. He asked the question, would thou be made whole? We can look at other questions uh, in the Word of God. In Malachi chapter number 10, he asked the blind man, What will thou that I should do for thee? Wouldn't you like to have God ask you that one? Yes, sir. What would you like for me to do for you? Right. Bless him. I've got some things I'd like for him to do for me personally. Sure. I've got some things that I'd like for him to do for my ministry. But then we come back to Solomon here, and he asked Solomon, he said, what is it that I can give you? Now, automatically, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking as a pastor, I'm thinking, uh, what, what would I want God to give me? I, I want a whole bunch of church members with no deacons, and I, I want a bigger offering plate, and I want these sort of blessings that we think about. But I want you to notice what Solomon asked God for. Come on, yeah. We usually get to that for a second answer there, but I see one in verse number 9. He asked God, he said, let thy promise unto David be established. Amen. I didn't notice that one until this morning. He said, God, the promise that you made my father, can you establish it? I want to claim the promise that you've made to my family. I want that promise to fall. You promised David that his throne would be established in this family. You, you promised that would stay there. I want to claim that promise. You promised that you would bless. You promised that I would get to build the house of God. Claiming the promises. I was told there's some 8,810 promises in the Word of God. Tonight I'd like to claim a few of them. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Sure. I mean, if you would ask God, God would ask me what it was that I would want. I think I just want what God has promised me. Yeah. Come on. Instead of the things that I desire, how about the things that He promised? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. How about the joy and the peace and the contentment that we've heard so much preaching about here? How about the, uh, the promise that He would never leave me, nor forsake me, that He'd go even unto the ends of the earth with me? How about just claim He was, I claimed that one. Amen. The many Amen. promises. Yeah. Yeah. I just want what God wants to give me. Amen. I heard a story about a preacher, a pastor, and a deacon were praying in the church. So the pastor jumped up and took off running. A deacon, and one of the members asked him, said, where are you going? He said, well, that deacon just got done praying and said, God, give me what I deserve, and I want out of here before that happens. <laughs> I want what he's promised me. Amen. But then he asked for wisdom. And knowledge. If you studied out carefully all that he asked for here, he said, I want the ability 
to do what you've called me to do. Right. right. Yeah. 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 He said, God, you've established David's throne with me. Right. You've given me a kingdom. You've given me a responsibility too great for me to handle. At 35 years old, I have a responsibility too, too great for me to handle. Pastoring a church, handling the Word of God. If I would have met myself at 24 and said, you're going to be a pastor, I'd punch him in the nose. Uh, at 24, I couldn't pastor a church. No, I can't do it now. Bless him, Lord. God, I want the wisdom yeah. and the knowledge to do what you've called me to do. Yeah. Right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. We know what wisdom and knowledge is. Knowledge is knowing something. Wisdom is knowing how to use that knowledge right. correctly. That's where I got in a lot of trouble as a young preacher and yesterday. Uh, <laughs> I had knowledge, yeah. but I didn't always use that knowledge with wisdom. Right. I've got to move on. I want to give you some more questions from God. I, want, I can linger on Solomon all day long. When was the last time that we asked God just to give me what I need to accomplish your will? Amen. Amen. Not my will. Your will. Yeah. Let me give you some more questions from God. You need to go home and study these questions for yourself. John chapter 21, we have Jesus asking the question of Peter. He said, Peter, lovest thou me? Have you ever been asked that question by God? Mm. Let's back that up. Have you been in a position where God could ask you, ask you a question? He said, if you love me, feed my sheep. He asked him three times. Why do you think it was necessary to ask him three times? Maybe like you and I, Peter ain't never got to a point where he closed his mouth enough that he could show him. We're too busy talking. But he asked Peter, but we can't linger on that one. I've got others I want to give you that are a little more fun to preach. Matthew chapter 26, or Matthew chapter 16. Jesus asked this question. Who do men say that I am? And we've heard a great deal of preaching today on who He is. And I like the one that's Him. I preached that one a few times myself. But He's asking the question, who do men say that I am? And we hear all kinds of crazy things today of who God is. God is love. Well, of course He is, but He's also a God of wrath. Uh, they have no clue what love is. So therefore, they don't know who God is. Right, right, right. But they flip, the, they flip the question. And this one you need to take home and meditate on. Who do you say that I am? Yeah, right. yeah. See, I like the old story about the preacher that died and he got to the gates of heaven and a man standing there said, You're saved and we're glad you're here. Before you go in, do you know who Jesus is? Oh, of course I do. He's the Alpha and Omega. He's the creator of all. He's God in the flesh. I said, All right, come on in. The deacon got there, got to the gates, and they said, Do you know who Jesus is? Well, of course I do. He's God in the flesh. He's the creator of all. He's Alpha and Omega. And they said, Okay, come on in. The little widow lady came in, Sunday school teacher for 35 years. She got to heaven, and they said, You know who Jesus is? And with tears running down her face, she said, Yes, I would know you who you know who he is. We know the book. We know the statements. We know all the names. We know the Jehovah and his sin. Uh, all those wonderful Greek names and Hebrew names that I can't pronounce. We know those things. But do we know who he is so that I can stand in front of him and tell you this is who he is to me? He is my Savior. He is my friend. He is the one that's the than a brother. He is the great I am to me. That's who he is. I know who he is. I've met him. I've walked with him. I've talked with him. I've fellowship with him. I've spent some time in his presence just listening to him. I know who he is. We can look at Matthew chapter number 8 where he asks his disciples, why are you so fearful? Well, if you know who he is, what do you got to fear? Right. We're taking some Bible classes up where we're at uh, by a missionary. He met his dad, Paul Pritchard Jr., one teaching the class that was senior that was here. He made this statement in the class dealing with authority. He said, if you have ever met God, yeah. why would you fear a man? Right. We can look at multitude of others. Matthew chapter 16. He asked his disciples after dealing with them of the eleven of the Pharisees, he said, do you not yet understand, neither remember? 
Have you not yet figured out I'm not dealing with a flesh, we're not dealing with fleshly things? It's spiritual. But I've got three minutes. Let me give you the last question. It's found in Matthew chapter 21 and verse 42. Jesus asked this question. Jesus saith unto them, Do ye never read in the Scriptures? Right. How many times in the last day, two days, have we heard preachers say, I've studied and I've studied, but I ain't never seen this before. You're right. Mm -hmm. yep. Can I break in on something, preachers, I figured out? We're too busy preaching and we're not studying. You're right. What I mean by that is we're preparing for the next message. Sure, yeah. But we're not reading this book. You know why we're not reading that? Because this book says we don't have to fear, and yet we still fear. This Bible says we don't have to worry, and yet we still worry. This Bible still says that I'm not going to leave you, and I'm not going to forsake you, and yet we still think He's going to leave us and forsake us. This Bible says I will provide. If I sin, I will provide. And we still sit back saying, well, we would like to do that, but I just don't think we can afford it. Yeah. Have you not read Come on, the Scriptures? It's got the answer. I've told this story in a lot of places, and I'll sit down. We've got the answer. You ever had a question you ain't found the answer to? This Bible was given to me. It's brand new. Still in the box, wrapped up. A friend of mine pulled it out of a trash can. He worked at a dumpster, convenience center. They threw it away. He brought it to me. Brand new, still in the box. Printed in 1959. For 60 some years, somebody had the answer. And Jesus is sitting there saying, Have you not read in the scripture? The answer is right there. Your ministry, what do you need? The preacher just said it a while ago. He said he looked it all the time until he figured out he needed favor, had been there the whole time. He needed favor. Right there. Right. Yeah. Have you not read in the scripture right. the answer to what you need to your life, to your ministry? The questions of Jesus. Can I encourage you to take some time to study some more? To find the questions that Jesus asked. Yeah. And then ask them concerning your own life. Lord, uh, on my hearts, two more preachers and we'll be done. I don't want to worry too. I, I, I like to go all days more. I don't want to preach. Just can't get to everybody. Amen. Brother Sam Rose is going to come give us about 15 minutes. And I hate doing that to a preacher. You younger preacher, so you give us 10 minutes, you can get off the ground quicker than these pastors can. <laughs> See, he's still I'll letting him up here, amen. <laughs> It'll take me a while to get off the runway there, amen. He ain't even got the propeller going yet, amen. Amen. Preach, amen. Acts chapter number four, I've been fighting all day. I'll just be honest with you, the devil's been fighting me all day. He doesn't want me to go to this passage, so I'm going to go there anyway, amen? amen. And he's saying, well, there's people here already heard that, and people here already know what, what your testimony is. I don't know why the Lord... Uh, wants me to share my testimony today. But that's what I'm going to do. Great, yeah. I, I just driving here this morning. I about welled up, and y'all just have to get over it. Amen. Come on, you man. well up with me, all right? Amen. And uh, most of you all, the seniors that are here this this week, they're mine. You can't have them. I don't care what anybody else says. They're my friends. Amen. Yeah. And uh, we love them. They're from our area. Went to church with them for many years, and they've heard this. Uh, they actually heard this from my first message I ever preached. Amen? Acts chapter number 4, verse number 5. I might cry for about 10 minutes and talk to you for about 5, and it'll be okay, all right? Acts chapter number 4 this evening, and verse number 5. Let's just, for the sake of time, let's just go right to verse number 8, okay? Acts chapter number 4, verse number 8. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto him, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the infinite man, by what means he is made whole? But uh, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel, now listen, 
that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, yeah. whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of, of you builders, which he has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them, listen to this last phrase, that they had been with Jesus. Amen. I'm thankful today I've been around some people I can tell they've been with Jesus. Amen. I'm thankful, Brother Jeff, I've been around some people the last couple of days, the last few years of my life that I can tell I, they've been with Jesus. Amen. There's no doubt here Peter and John are. They come and, and they, they, they go before the people and they're telling them, listen, you're, we're not preaching in any other name. You're not going to shut us up. You're not going to make us be quiet. We're going to preach in the name of Jesus today, amen. I'm thankful that there's still some people that proclaim the name of Jesus today, amen. Let me share, I'm just going to share my testimony with you. If you want to put a title on this, it would just simply be religion or relationship. You say, why would you preach this to a bunch of preachers? Oh, let me tell you why I preach it to a bunch of preachers and preachers' kids, amen, and preachers' wives, amen, and church members, probably some church members here, because I was that preacher's kid. Amen. I, I, oh, Brother Jordan, I was that preacher's kid. I sat right there on that pew. Yeah, oh, lost and died and on my way to hell. Hey, Amen. You've heard it said before. Oh, I had a drug problem growing up. I never shot up with drugs, Brother Jordan. I've never smoked dope. Hey, Amen. I've never I took crack, never done any of that stuff. But I had a drug problem. Mom and Daddy drug me to church Sunday morning. They drug me to church Sunday night. They drug me to church Wednesday night. Hey, Amen. All the while, I had the religion. Hey, Amen. I had the looks, Brother D. I talked the talk and I walked the walk. I went to a Christian school uh, 13 years from kindergarten all the way through graduation. Heard the gospel every single day of my life, Brother Coulter. This man's grandfather was my pastor for a while. And listen to me, I knew what the gospel was. I could take you down the Romans Road. I could take you and show you what it was. I knew what it was, but all I had was religion. Amen. Well, I looked like I had been with Jesus. I, I talked like it, but I did not have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. I, I got to thinking about that on, on religion and how foolish I was to have religion. Oh, there's people sitting across their pews and in our churches across this country today. They're too ashamed to admit that all they've got today is religion. And all they've got today is they look like they've been with Jesus. Oh, but the people here, they can tell that they have been with Jesus. And there's a difference. I'm telling you today, there was a difference in my life. When I gave my life to Jesus, I, I acted like I'd been with Jesus. And I, I wanted to be with Jesus. Say, man. Amen. You say, how, how, well, where did this come from, preacher? Well, let me tell you, my dad pastors a church up in the mountains of Virginia. Amen. As I said, was in church all my life. I'm the youngest of seven sons. Amen. Mark, Matthew, Luke, John, David, Stephen, and Samuel. Praise God for that. I tell people all the time, I'm glad they stopped in the New Testament where they did because if they had not been 1 Corinthians, you'll get that on your way home. Amen. But listen to me. I'm thankful for my heritage. I'm thankful that my parents cared enough to have me in the house of God. Oh, but I, listen, Daddy was a preacher. Oh, Mama was one of the ones, listen, one of the dearest saints of God I know is my mother. Oh, yes, she would spend hours on her knees begging God to save her children, begging God to put her kids in the ministry, and begging God to use her children in some way, yeah. some form or some fashion. Oh, but here I was all the while. I, I was in church, amen. I got married. I, I'm thankful for a godly wife. When we were dating, my wife asked me this question, are you saved? Because I don't date a lost person. Teenage has a good place to start, amen. I'm just being honest with you. I lied 
to her. I said, oh yeah, I'm saved. I, I honestly, I made a profession of faith at a young age, about the third grade. I, I, I thought I was saved, but God, here, after she asked me that question, the Lord starts working in my life. Well, are you really saved? Do you really know him? Are you really, I wasn't living for him, Brother Caleb. Yeah. I didn't want nothing to do with him. I wasn't in church. She said, well, if you're going to date me, you're going to have to go to church. I said, well, you're pretty good looking. I'll go to church with you. Amen. And she paid me for that when she watched the video later. Amen. But listen to me. She said, you know, if we're going to date, we're going to, we're going to go to church. Praise God. I'm thankful for that. And so as we get together and we start dating and we get married, amen, I, I've been to one wedding where the gospel was presented and it was mine. My father married us and my wife had enough guts about her that said, I'm going to have family members at that church that day. Yeah. They're not going to come to church ever again. But before the wedding starts, I want you to present the gospel. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I'm thankful yeah. for a godly wife. Amen. Yeah. I'm telling you right now, I wouldn't be where I'm at today if God hadn't given me the wife that he gave me. Amen. Amen. I'm thankful for that today. Oh, but I was foolish in believing that I was on my way to heaven because of the religion that I had. Yeah. Because Amen. of the religion that I had today. Oh, so we get married, and, 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 and shortly after we get married, we wasn't in church. She said, listen, we got to get in church. If we're going to have kids, we're going to bring kids in this world, we're going to church. I said, well, let's go find a church. We found a little church, joined up. I thought I got things right with the Lord, and we go join that church, and we start serving, buddy. Oh, we got busy, amen. I served Brother Jeff, taught Sunday school, ran the sound system, ran the bus routes. My wife, shortly thereafter, become the church secretary. Hey, man, we're serving the Lord. We're doing all these things. We're busy. Oh, we're busy. We're busy. We're busy with religion. Come on, not, not my wife, but I'm talking about myself. I was busy with religion. I was busy yeah. making myself feel good about things. Amen. Amen. I was busy doing things that looked right uh, like, and acting right and doing all the right things. You remember I grew up in church, right? Yeah. Yeah. You remember I, I knew the lingo. I knew the things to say. I knew how to act. I knew how to dress. I, I knew how to talk. Amen. I knew about standards and I knew about all these things. We had a child. He's now almost 19 years old, and, and we have a, 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 a. She's pregnant at the time with our second one. And then we're having a special Sunday at that church there in Knoxville, Tennessee, and, and we're having a special uh, meeting. And there's a revival. There's an evangelist that comes in. His name is Bill Lislin, and he comes in. And that Sunday morning, he preaches on hell. Uh, imagine that a lost church member needing to hear a message on hell. There's a bunch of those today. Amen. Amen. I was sitting right back there in that back corner, right there, back there with that man sitting in that back corner today. And the sound system was there, and I was running the sound system. That whole service, the Lord's knocking on my door. That's you he's talking to. Oh, Lord, what are you talking about? I, I got saved at the age of eight. I had it all worked out in my head. Amen. Well, but all I was dealing with was religion that day. All I had was religion. Amen. The Bible says in the book of Romans, chapter 1. Verse 21 it says, Because and when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were faithful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible, and God into an image like a, to a corruptible man, and the birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. The book of Proverbs says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. I acted like I wanted to hear it. I talked like I wanted to hear it. But I really was just going through one in one ear and out the other. That's right. <laughs> What's today's day? <laughs> Glory to God. Hey, listen to me. April the 4th, 2004. That's the day I gave my life to Christ. Just about 20 days ago, I had a spiritual birthday. Amen. But listen to me. It was April the 4th, 2004. The Lord come knocking on my door and said, If you don't get right today, I'm never talking to you again. Oh, I was one step, Brother Jeff, from hell. I, I would have continued doing what I knew to do. I would have continued acting right. I would have continued talking right, Brother Caleb. But I was one step yeah. away from going to hell as a lost wow. church member, wow. a lost pastor's kid, a, a lost secretary's husband. Amen. I was one step 
from hell that morning. He come knocking on my door. That morning they gave the invitation. I, I sat there for about two chords of a song. I don't know what a chord is, but it sounds good, amen. About two chords of a song, praise God. And I come up that aisle. I come up to the front pew. There was a preacher standing there that I know. He pastors a church out in Oregon now. He went out there and started, and I come to him. You see, I, I've been soul winning with that man. I've been knocking on doors with that man. That man had called me and said, hey, Brother Sam, I wasn't his brother, but he called me that, amen. He said, I need your prayer about this situation. I need you to pray about that situation. I said, I'll pray and hang up the phone and never say a word. Right. Even if I would have, God probably wouldn't have heard it. Amen. Right. I came up to him. I said, Brother Bo, I can't do it anymore. He said, what are you talking about? I said, I got to get saved. Amen. He didn't bring his Bible. He didn't take his Bible. He just looked at me square in the eye and said, you know what to do. Amen. He goes, I don't have to tell you what to do. You know what to do. Amen. Oh, but that day, oh, that day, Brother Dave, I laid the religion down. Hey, 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 got a relationship hey, hey, with you. You say, preacher, how do you know there's people like you all across America? Oh, the day I surrendered to preach the gospel. Somebody said yesterday, they surrendered to preach on Sunday, and the preacher said, come back on Wednesday. I surrendered to preach on a Sunday morning, the preacher said, come back tonight. Amen. You're preaching, praise God. Oh, but that night, oh, but that night, Miss Tabby, there was a young man walked out. But guess what? It was a preacher's kid. Yeah. Oh, he'd been in church his whole life. He'd been doing all the right things. Coming to Sunday morning, coming to Sunday school. Oh, but shortly after he walked out, guess what? There come the preacher's wife. Amen. Amen. You said the preacher's wife, not our preacher's wife, but a preacher in the church. His wife walked out. Oh, we go the next week from that point forward. I, I'm kind of skipping. I'm trying to hurry my, my testimony here just a little bit. The next week we go to Knoxville to preach. We go to Friends of Ours Church to preach there. He said, come share your testimony. I went and shared this same message I'm sharing with you right now. April, the, April of uh, 2017 is when I surrendered to preach. And I ran from that. That's a whole different testimony. Amen. But listen to me. I went down there and guess who walked out of that day? A lost church. Church member. Oh, she had been in church her whole life. Our churches are full of people with religion. And they're full of people that are dying and on their way to hell because we made them comfortable in the church pew. You listen to me today. We've got people all over this country. The churches of missionaries that you go in, preachers, evangelists that you go in, we got to stop sugarcoating the gospel. Yeah. I'm glad that there was a man named Bill Islam that morning, Brother Caleb, that stood up and was some boldness and with some unction and with some intestinal fortitude and said, if you don't get saved today, you're going to die and split hell's gates wide open. Yeah. You say, preacher, have you seen a whole lot of people say, I, I don't keep track of them, amen, but God's been able to let us see a few saved, amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's been able to let us see those that we talked about. And listen, I've got a burden for church members, amen. I've got a burden for preacher's kids, amen. I've got a burden for preacher's wives. And I'm finding out pretty quick that brothers and preachers that need to get saved too, amen. 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 It got quiet. I kind of thought amen. that was what you said. You say, what are you talking about? We have let anybody and anything come into our pulpits in the day and time that we live in. I'm telling you today, we, we've let, listen, we've let the world take over our pulpits. We've let the world say, hey, you can only, you can only preach this, you can only preach that. But listen, we need some people, some men. Some, I said it, some men right. that are willing to stand behind this pulpit. This is a sacred place. I don't take this for granted, Brother Dick. I don't take this for granted, Brother Jeff. This is sacred ground up here, amen? Uh, listen, this is a place that we need some men that have some unction. And we'll say, hey, we're going to proclaim the word of God. Over that day, I went from having religion to having a relationship. I went from, I hope that when people see me now, Brother Stephen, they can tell I've been with Jesus. I failed at it. I know that I have. I know that I failed at it. But I want to be like John and Peter. Oh, but they can tell he had been with Jesus. Yeah. When was the last time somebody could tell you you've been with Jesus? Yeah. Yeah. When was the last time that the crowd, the world looked at you and said, hey, there's something different about them. Yeah. Not because of the way they dress. 
Hold on now. We put the suit coat and the tie above above salvation. Yeah. You understand me today? I'm not I'm for the suit coat. I'm for the tie. I wear one every time I'm in the pulpit. Amen. I believe it's right. I have no problem with that. Oh, but it's not about the look. We, we, we put that before a, a relationship with Jesus Christ. Today. Amen. I'm almost done. Let me share this. About a year after I gave my life to Christ, he come knocking again, I want you to preach. I come knocking again, I want you to preach. I said, I don't want to preach. I don't want nothing to do with it, Brother Jeff. I saw how those church members treated my daddy. Yeah. My daddy was a pastor. I can remember at the age of five years old, my daddy getting ran off from a church. I remember it today. I didn't like it, and I'll be honest with you, there's still some days I don't like it, amen. But I said, I don't want nothing to do with that. Oh, but he said, you've got a relationship with me now, and you need to tell others about that relationship with me, and you can do that a whole lot better if you're in my will and doing what I've called you to do. I didn't do it that year. I didn't do it the next year. I didn't do it the next year, Brother Jeff. I didn't do it the next year. About 12 years later, I surrendered to preach. He said, what got you there? He took my job. I've been working for a company for 12 and a half years. Uh, January the 1st, 2017, we got an email. said, be on this conference call at this day. 450 people nationwide lost their jobs that day. He said, now what are you going to do? He said, I ain't doing it. I'm not preaching. I don't want to do it. Yesterday was four years ago, April the 23rd, 2017. 1.30 in the morning, I knelt on my knees at my recliner in my house. I said, God, if that's what you want me to do, I'm going to do it. Amen. 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 Got up that morning. I started putting on a suit. My wife said, you had not wear a suit to church in a while. I said, I know. I said, I got something to tell you. I said, I surrendered to preach at 1.30 this morning. You know, you're expecting that nice. Oh, you're so great. I love you. Well, it's about time. <laughs> she goes, you've been preaching for a long time. You just didn't know it, amen. Can I ask you today, do you have religion? Or do you have a relationship with him? Right. Yeah. Do you have religion? Or do you have a relationship with Jesus Christ? Amen. Amen. That's good. Amen. That's a lot of truth in that. Amen. Yeah. Amen. A lot of people got the religion and got the relationship. Amen. And we fall in that too. We got relationship, but then we get into the mechanics of it. Y'all preachers know what I'm talking about. Amen. Got to get that outline just like I got it written. Sometimes do you good. I found out when I pastor, just slide that outline under there and go with God. And it's always got, you know what I'm talking about. And then there's some that do need an outline. Say amen right there. Amen. <laughs> Keep them in line. You know what I'm talking about. Laugh. It's good. We got one more preaching. I'm going to let you go in a minute. Ain't going to be like Pharaoh. Thank God I ain't preaching. Amen. I preach another hour. I would. Amen. The other is preachers fellowship preach too long. They set me down. Amen. Or my wife does. She's going. <laughs> anyway, Brother Dean Eaton's with us today. I wanted to get him in. And I always try to close out with a, a pastor. Actually, two pastors have preached these last two messages, but Brother Dean's a pastor, local pastor. I want to close out with a, I always try to close out with a seasoned man of God. Try to start out with one of ours. That ain't been good. Yeah. Yeah. It's not over. Listen to this man of God. We'll have an altar call. Amen. Brother Dean, come on, give us a stop. Which one, 15 or 20? 20. <laughs> one October 15, one said 20. 20 Maybe 17. <laughs> <clears throat> Where's Fred Hall? Back to under here. <laughs> well, we've heard some good preaching today. Amen. And I can preach like every one of these preachers preached. I can preach loud and I can preach low. And yeah. I can preach fast and I can preach slow. Yeah. <clears throat> I've been preaching for 40 years. Amen. Pastoring the same church now Amen. for almost 29 years. Amen. We'll be in May, Brother Dean. Amen. I'll be at Northside. Amen. I was at the first message Brother Dean ever preached. And... Um, Anyhow, I pastored Brother Rayton Puckett's home church for six years up at Pilot View. And in 1992, I got, let me say this, I got saved when I was 15. 
got saved by October 1973. Lord called me to preach in March 1981. I hardly ever tell people about that. I don't even know if Dinko ever heard that from you when I started or not. But anyhow, I was thinking about we got called on to preach, and I'm pretty sure it was because I don't know, Lord will let you know. But I thought about, and I was praying about the last two or three days, Brother Jim, what to preach on. Bless you. And uh, Brother Jason there took my scripture this morning. <laughs> but I'm glad he did now. It gives me a little more time to talk. <laughs> Acts chapter 16. I'm going to read a few more verses than what he read there this morning. Acts chapter 16. <clears throat> And uh, where's where's that microphone? Acts chapter 16, verse 25. I brother, wish Brother Rick Renoy could have stayed this evening. I've got some precious memories of him in prison. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake. So that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands were loosed. And the keeper of the prison awakened out of his sleep. And seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Ain't that amazing? Bunch of prisoners. All here, Brother Jason. Then he called for a light, sprang in, came trembling, fell down before Paul. So I've heard people say you shouldn't try to scare people into getting saved. Well, if God can <clears throat> scare people into getting saved, it wouldn't hurt nothing for you and I to preach in a way that people get scared and get saved. Amen. And brought them out and said, Sirs, what? must I do to be saved? Amen. And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved in thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord to all that were in the house and to all that were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night washed their stripes was baptized, he and all he had straightway. And when he had brought them into the, his house, he set meat before them and rejoiced, believing in God with all his house. What an experience. These men here, heard these men that most of the time when you're in prison, you ain't going to hear somebody singing praises and having a prayer meeting. But this was different. And I want to talk just a few minutes on some things I've experienced in prison. I've never been in prison as far as being there. I was a good moral person before I got saved. I got saved when I was 15. Mama took me to church. Dad got saved after I did. But got married and wasn't too long the Lord called me to preach and had a couple of boys and got one grandson now. He's about 10 months old. Amen. Some of you have seen him on Facebook. Amen. Ezra. Amen. But I went to Northside Baptist Church, Brother Jeff. Come on, Richard. <laughs> went to North 
West Side Baptist Church in May. Of, well, I went there before that. They tried me out a while, but they put me in in May of 1992. Well, Brother Butch, it wasn't but a year or two later, and I can't remember the year for sure, my brother Fred Hawks come along, and yeah. we was already friends. <clears throat> I want you to go to prison with me. I'm not interested in going to no prison. I was interested in telling people about the Lord, but I wasn't interested in going to prison. But he was like that one over there, sort of kept on with the with the judge there. Yeah. The yeah. state persisted. Yeah. I want you to go with me to prison. Sure. So brother I went. Wilmington, Delaware. Mm -hmm. Hometown <laughs> of our president. I'd never been up north. I'd never been farther than up in Virginia a little ways north. And I ain't never been nowhere as far as traveling a whole lot concerns. But here we were, Brother Eddie Gordon. Some of y'all know Eddie Gordon. He's an unusual fellow. He's a praying man. Yes, Unusual fellow. But we went to prison, Brother Dink, and I don't know that old toy, but that time, that's for your time, Brother Jill. I guess both Fred had all toy probably at that time in there, way they had it set up, may have hold close to 200, I guess. And uh, people preaching. I had an opportunity to preach, and I forgive if it was the first time when or not, but first time I ever preached, it was, I didn't even have to think about what I was going to say. God was so strong, brother. Yes. Where sin and abounded, grace did much more. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Tell it, brother. Amen. Bless you, Lord. Brother Jeff, I brother Fred, I don't know if you remember this or not, but the first time when we got through with that last night, when we went out, I was crying like a baby. God was so strong. Yes. And I could see what God could do with these men. Yes. A lot of them were black men. They were twice as big as I am. But you could go, and at that time, we could go up in the cells, and Brother Coulter, we could talk to them. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I've seen this coming a long time ago. I'm going to throw this in for a second. When we started going, Brother Fred, you'll remember that they had one little area up top where they had the American government program. Mm -hmm. now, now, I don't know how long, Brother Jeff probably tell you how long it's been since we was up there. But the next thing you know, that whole place just about got to be a government program. How many times do we have prisoners come and tell us they ain't worth five cents? Yeah. But we go to them. Because oh, we have to. And I forget what they told us, how much money the state gave them for each man that took those classes. <laughs> well, one night, Brother Coulter, I was sitting up there on the, in the pulpit area like this right here. And I was just sitting there and looking over the crowd and watching the prisoners come in. And one of them came over here to the side of me and he said, Preacher, can I talk to you? I said, you sure can, brother. I said, we still got a few minutes to go. He said, preacher, I want to tell you something. That's <laughs> he said, thank you. Yeah. We're coming up here. Yeah. Thank you for driving seven or eight hours to tell us about the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Tell it, brother. Oh, yeah. It's real, brother. Yes, sir. Yes. He said, uh, this is a highlight 
of our year. When we first started going, we were going in February and September. And every time we go, Brother Fred remembers this. This is before your time too, Brother Jeff. By the way, I was one got Jeff for going. Yeah. But anyhow, it was snow every time we went, just about. And it was Black History Month. And there's a lot going on. And so they changed it to March and September. And uh, Anyhow, one of the times we was up there, one of the first times I went, it came an awful snowstorm. Brother Jim Jeremiah got snowed in up there. We stayed at Faith Baptist Church. It was the, the chaplain's church that he went to. And so Eddie Gordon, you ain't going to keep, Eddie, when, when the last amen is said in prison on Thursday night, you're going heading south. No doubt about it. You ain't staying, you're going. Ain't that right, Brother Fred? So we headed home. Jim stayed all night, got snowed in up there, and called people from the church there, and they had taken some food over there. But on a seven or eight hour trip, it took us 12 hours to get home. Can you imagine coming from Wilmington, Delaware, driving about 35 or 40 miles an hour? down Interstate 81 and 95. It was snowing so hard, we missed the turn for the Northern Beltway at Washington and went on down and come around on the south side and come back over and hit 81 or 66 and on down there. Got home next morning about 8.30, 9 o'clock. Some things I've experienced in prison. Now, <clears throat> There's a barber that came. He is from Connecticut. I'm going to tell you about this right quick. He, he had been a former Catholic. And in them prisons up north, there's a plenty of Catholics in there. Yeah. Muslims and Catholics. Muslims and Catholics. Well, this guy, boy, he could talk to, to Catholics because he had been one. It makes a difference if you've been one. Like Brother Fred, some of these guys, they ain't been in prison before. Some of them guys that's been in prison, they know how to talk to people about prison. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. And so, Brother Fred was talking to me about that. He says, it was last night. We went up to Willis Scout, my home church, revival. He said, God's given me a gift to talk to them prisoners. Yeah, he's been in prison. God used that. Well, this particular, right quick, to make this story short, I made a comment about this guy's necktie. When we got out the last night, he took his necktie off and gave it to me, Brother Dan. And I said, I just made a comment about your tie. I didn't come comment for you to give it to me, and he gave it to me. Anyhow, one of those times, and that's when this guy was coming, and I don't remember if Jeff had started at this time or not, but one time we were up there and we were praying, Brother Dean, for a hundred souls that week. Well, when we come out on Thursday night, guess what when the final count was? 110. God gave us what we was praying for and a tithe on top of it. I'm telling you the truth. Come on, preacher. Brother Joe Kaki, he was a chaplain up there. This is something interesting. I've only got a couple more things here, so I'll tell you about this. Joe Kaki's dad, when his mom and dad were doing well, they always one time during the week, Brother Dave wanted to fix us a meal. Boy, we'd go over at their house. I don't know if you got in on that or not. We'd go over there at their house, and his wife, his mom would have us a a meal fit. I mean, it's usually just six, seven, eight dollars. And she'd have us a meal fixed over there. They lived over on in Wilmington over there. And, 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 and brother, they, we'd have a meal fixed for a king. We'd go over there and eat, but here's what I was wanting to tell you. His dad had cuckoo clocks. I mean, he had big ones. He had wide ones, 
he had shortened and at 12 o'clock he had them things set up he probably had a hundred never one of them alive and he had them things brother set off when one would start he had them things down time to where the next one would go off and that would go off for a second and the next one would go off and you'd listen to a hundred cuckoo clocks <laughs> And then we'd go down and eat. Man. That was interesting. That was interesting. I just wanted to throw that in. I knew you'd get a kick out of that. Well, let's get back to a couple other things here right quick. One night we were in prison. I'm going to tell you fellas of Rock of Ages something. If you ain't already figured this out, you need to. I never, ever, and, and this is my fault and nobody's but mine, but I never hardly ever have tears at church when I preach. But I found out what will speak to prisoners. God gave me tears to preach in prison and I seen that they react to that. Yeah. So you know what I started doing after that? I started praying for yeah. tears. Yeah. I said, Lord, when I preach tonight, sometime I know, sometime I want to know. And I said, if I'm going to preach tonight, I want tears, God. So one night we were there. And I don't know if you was there at this time. I believe you was at that by that time. I got up to preach and I couldn't, pre I couldn't preach for about five minutes. I mean, I just cried. Mm -hmm. You remember that? Yeah. That's important. And we always had people saved. I mean, you know, we always had some saved at that prison. Well, the devil done a great job in shutting it down. We saw all I ever seen. He's a, he's a, he's a devil. That's a good name for him. Yeah. Yeah. But I preached that night and cried and preached and cried and Every time I'd preach in prison, I'd wind up. I didn't mean to, but every time I preached just about, I wound up preaching on hell before it was over with. Well, this particular night, and the way you give an invitation in prison, uh, I'd always, the way I gave it, people give it different ways, I'd say, now listen, if you need to get saved tonight, I want you to come. If you're wanting to rededicate your life to the Lord, because we didn't have many people to work with them there. And I said, if you, uh, if you want to get saved tonight, I want you to come forward. And those of you want to, uh, Brother Frank, if those of you want to uh, rededicate your life, you come on up in a few minutes. And that way we can deal with all this and won't have a bunch of confusion. Well, when we gave the invitation, sure, here they come. I said, I believe some of you guys didn't understand the invitation. I said, I would really appreciate it if you're just come to rededicate your life to the Lord. If you go back to your seat and we'll do that in a minute. You didn't say that, preacher. Yeah, I did. Well, didn't nobody go back? It's 30 men. Amen. Now one of them went back, got saved that night. And then I gave opportunities for those to come that wanted to rededicate their life or pray. But boy, that night, they were some jailers there. I should have got said. We always had a couple of people in there, and officers. Boy, God had their attention that night. Well, one more thing I want to tell you. Um, my time's gone, but we have got all bear with me just a second. How many of you remember where you were at September the 11th, yeah. 2001? Mm -hmm. How many of you remember? Mm -hmm. Everybody in here just about got their hand up except the kids and the younger people. You know where we was at? <coughs> September the 11th, 2001, we was in prison. At Wilmington, Delaware. Well, it was like a normal Tuesday morning. We got in prison. We had been in there and we had talked to men and 
some talk started going along. I, I'd seen them. They had a TV in there in one of the pods, and I thought they was watching an old film or some kind. They showed something on there. And, and we got back out there in the hallway, Brother Jeff. You'll remember it probably. Yeah. And uh, somebody asked the officer, said, what in the world is going on? And some, some things seemed sort of strange. He said, uh, the planes have attacked the Pentagon. Next thing you know, planes have attacked the Twin Towers. Mm -hmm. Well, we was in there, we got out lunchtime, we went down to Wendy's, down on 13, we eat lunch, and they came on the radio and they said the schools and all non-essential state personnel had been sent home. The Chaplain had told Roger Napper that was their leader there at that time. He said, call back. Y'all might not get to come back this afternoon because of what's happened. We got back. We walked out through the parking lot. Here come a couple of officers, and they spoke to us. And they said, well, you probably can't get in. The prison's locked down. So you remember this, Brother Jeff. We went on anyhow. We went to the front desk. They didn't say one word about us not being able to go in. We went in, went in the cells like we normally did. Left that afternoon, you might better call before you come back after supper because you might not be able to have services tonight. Me and Brother Tommy Nichols were supposed to preach that night. Brother Roger called the lieutenant and called in and he said, uh, that might just be what we need around here tonight. <laughs> we were there Tuesday. Well, we got there on Monday, but Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Didn't miss one bit. Every service, able to go upstairs. I'm bragging on God. God opened up. It was shut down. It was locked down. Mm -hmm. And we were still able to go in and preach. Mm -hmm. And people get saved. Mm -hmm. Where does all that come from, preacher? How does all of that happen? It's done been said 500 times here today. <laughs> Prayer. Yeah. Get along with God. I wish I had time to tell you about some of these fellows. I will tell you about one for a second. I was guy witnessing to a guy one day, and the reason I want to tell you this, this is so important. I said, are you saved? He said, I'm a Baptist. <laughs> I said, you're a Baptist. I said, you're being saved? He said, I'm a Baptist. I said, what do you mean you're a Baptist? I said, do you mean you've been to church with your mom and dad and all that stuff down through it? Yeah. I said, have you ever confessed that you as a sinner and asked the Lord if we could? Well, no, I ain't ever done that. And I started in Genesis and took him up to the cross and explained all the sacrifices in the Old Testament. About halfway through that, Brother Dink, Brother Jason. Hey, man. Oh, man. I said, Holy Spirit's got him now. Yeah. Hey, man. But he got saved. He started walking around out there sailing. <clears throat> he was happy as a lark. Mm -hmm. But when I started talking to him, he was a Baptist. And it's done been said, there's a lot of people that are Baptists that need to get saved. And they're in prison, they're in churches, they're everywhere. I apologize for taking over time, but, but I'm telling you, you guys at Rock of Ages, you are doing a great job. If if if, if Lord allowed me, I would have, that's what I'd rather do than anything. I'd go to do that, but God get put me a pastor, and I ain't complaining about that. I love that too, Amen. Brother Dean. But you're doing a great job and going into schools and all that. Just make sure God gets in it, and everything will be just fine. He'll get you home through a snowstorm. 
if it takes 12 hours, amen. amen. And he'll break down that big old fellow that's seven feet tall. You'll think he can whip you all to pieces and the Holy Ghost get a hold of him and make a little kitten out of him. God bless you. Let's all stand by our heads to work for our wood. And so, you want piano player here, brother? <clears throat> Every head bowed, every eye closed. I'll just get the singer to come if you would. Y'all just stand right over here if you would. They'll come and sing this one. He said, Preacher, it's been a long, it's just two days. Can't sacrifice a little bit for the Lord. You don't know what God's doing in somebody's heart. There's a whole lot more I want to preach. Brother Blake, I want to preach you. Brother Joy, I want to get you up here. Just a lot of others just didn't work out. I believe it's sufficient. There's been enough gospel here to save the world. Amen. Can I say something? I appreciate all the accolades and all the uh, pats on the back, but it ain't about Jeff Castle. It ain't about Coulter Patterson, Dakota Queen. It ain't about Rock of Ages. Amen. It ain't about True Vine Northside. It ain't about you. It's all about healing. Yes, sir. It's all about the Lord. I do want to give flowers while they're living. But Fred Hawks, if it wasn't for you, and I know you don't like this, if it was not for you bringing Rock of Ages to this area. Right. That's true. That's right. Half, half uh, nine, uh, 90 percent of the ones that's been here wouldn't even be Rock of Ages. Yeah. If it had not been for Butch Sperling, right. been a channel and avenue to get Fred in and Fred going. I know he don't like it. He's probably going to whoop me at the end of it. That's all right. Butch is a big reason why we take a bus load to Alabama. You don't go to a blitz with us, sign up. I can't do nothing. You singers, you ever been to prison? Them ladies would fall, slam apart. They would shout you down. They would. I do Abington. I want y'all, when it opens back up, I want y'all to come if y'all ain't scared. Everybody's scared. Oh, oh, I, I, they're all. Uh, if you knew what was sitting beside you right now. Right. Right. If you knew what I was capable of. If you knew what these men were capable of. If you knew what, you wouldn't want God to reveal your thoughts on the ceiling or on the wall what you thought today. That's right. Sure. That's right. So don't down them people. That's right. They just did what we think about doing. Yeah. Amen. But every head bowed and every eye closed. A meeting like this, I just wonder. Is there somebody here lost and undone? There was three that raised their hand in the earlier service. Today could be the day of salvation. Sure. Would you slip your hand up and say, Preacher, it's me. Brother Sam hit it, hit it good. I'm glad he did. Sam's a preacher. All these, all these men of God are preachers. Dean, I've never heard you slow down quite like that. I appreciate that. For Sam, you're right on target. Religious but lost. Yeah. There's nothing shameful about making sure. There's nothing shameful about, hey, preacher, what would they think? I'd rather, I'd rather get it right and people think something sure. crazy. Hey, and they ain't going to anyway. Right. Then to die and go to hell. Yes, they might. And miss heaven. Yes. Would there be one here to say, Preacher, I'm lost. Would you slip that hand up back down? Just want to pray for you. God bless you. One more time. Anybody else? How about it? Just slip that hand up high and say, Preacher, I'm lost. I'm lost. Pray for me. Anybody anywhere? Come on, ma'am, sir. Most important part of the service. How about it? If you've raised your hand and you want to be saved, why don't you step out right now? You've been playing a game. Right. You're religious, but you're lost. Help them, Lord. I've seen a hand go up somewhere. Please, would you come? Yeah. Would you come? Right now, would you step out? Just tell people, say, get out of my way. I've got to go to that altar. Come on, would you come right now? You that raised your hand. I've seen a hand go up. I'm not trying to pull you. I'm not trying to beg you. But I am trying to beckon to you. Would you come today? Could be your last. I'd hate to think I went to hell from a service like this. All this preaching. If we was in prison, the whole house would have done God. I'm just telling you, all this preaching, that has shouted us down. Everybody, I mean, we'd have a ton saved. Is there somebody here say, Preacher, I'm not where I need to be with the Lord. I need to get right with him. Would you slip your hand up back down? Anybody? Anybody? Maybe we need to come pray. Father, in the name of Jesus.
pray that you'll touch and bless them. Remain this altar call time. Touch these singers in Jesus' name. Amen. They got a song of invitation for us. Listen. Go ahead. Well, I am so glad God saves old sinners. Yes, I feel that amazed how He sets them free. Right. There ain't nothing like being locked up in religion. Come on. Come on, get saved. Come on. Come on, get saved. Come on. Come on. The rich in their palaces, the poor and the learned, and the man of the Pray for a sinner. Well, I am so glad. When's the last time you prayed for tomorrow's service and God put it on it? <laughs> When's the last time you asked God to just pour it out on your mouth, God? He sets them free. But the biggest surprise in redeeming old sinners. The biggest surprise is he'd save somebody. He would say. There's going to be one. This could be the last time. This could be the last time you reject. Yeah, I lived in sin's prison. So I was as lost as a sinner could be. Get with the now. Well, I am so glad. service for this, but if you feel led to give these ladies something that come a long way from Kingsport, I want you to come back next year if you would and sing for us. I hope you got some open doors and that's not what this is about, but everybody's like, where did them ladies come from? I said, God. <laughs> hey man, they come from God. You know, if I could sing real good and play an instrument, I'd probably get Full sure. supported, amen. And I, sure. I can't sing good, brother Jeff, amen. And, and don't shake your head, brother, amen. I got favor, okay, okay. You wasn't shaking your head, amen. But I appreciate the Lord. I also, Miss Debbie, uh, where are you at? Miss Debbie Haynes and, and uh, uh, brother Thomas's wife. Where, where, where is she at? My sister that uh, that will hook me in a heartbeat, amen. And, and this brother, where's your wife at, brother? The ones that serve, y'all raise your hands. Those that serve, us, three of them. It's one, two. Let's give them a hand. All thank you, Sue Thank you, thank you, brother Nick. Come on up here. 
and, and we'll let you close this. It's your church. You're the pastor. You close this meeting out as you see fit. You call him, brother, brother uh, Blake. It's good to see, you, brother. I wanted to preach to you so bad, and and, and just you can't.